We are entering the information age, and the Internet is a great place to move tons of information at the speed of light. The fastest growing part of the Internet is the World Wide Web, an area that combines text, graphics, and pictures, and permits people to hop from place to place easily. When we were working on the web in the 90s, we weren't thinking ahead too far. We were thinking about, can I make the web useful to people? So the early web was text and hyperlinks. Pretty soon, people got tired of just text and they wanted images as well. And that led to an embedded element that you could put in your page, but it referred to a different machine by its internet address. It referred to uh, your friend's cat picture server. And then 1994, the cookie came along, and you could think of that as a, a way of uh, saving some information in your browser for every site you visit. It was meant so when you go to your bank and you sign in, you would not have to sign in every time you went forward or back or started your browser over. Between the cookie and the image, you had a tracking system without knowing it. And we did this naively. We, we were saying, let's make the web useful, let's put images in, uh, let's make cookies so you don't have to log in all the time. Essentially, every click, every online interaction is recorded, and not just recorded by the company that you interacted with. The creepiest part of this is that it's being recorded by dozens, hundreds, perhaps even thousands of so-called third parties online. By first party, I mean the website that you think you're visiting, and a third party is any other entity that's on that site and uh, is typically not visible. You're typically not aware that you're interacting with them. So my grad students and postdocs and I have built a bot, an automated uh, computer program that pretends to be a real user and browses the web. It looks at the web's top one million websites every month, but it's especially looking at the things on those web pages that a human user would not notice. The cookies and what are called fingerprints and various other tracking technologies. So I started uh, OpenWPM to visit the top 100 websites. This loads each website on a different window and then collects the data about tracking related practices like cookies or scripts, what kind of data is being accessed and transferred. All these are logged into a database. Most commonly, they will just place a cookie with a unique identifier so that they can track you across websites. In the experiments where we enter personal information such as email and password, as soon as you type your like email address, it will be collected and sent to a third party. In other cases, the website will fingerprint your browser. If you go to order coffee at the same shop, the barista, who may not know your name until you give it to them, may recognize your order, they recognize how you dress, they recognize your hair style. They are identifying in the sense that it lets someone pick you out of the crowd. The way it works is that this company, this third party that's hidden on the site, sends a sequence of commands to your browser that causes it to draw an image, a hidden image that you would not know is being drawn on your screen. But the way that your browser is going to interpret those commands is going to be different based on the version number, based on various other things, even based on what is the set of fonts you have installed on your computer. Uh, when a website says, hey, try to draw this line, draw this curve, draw this shape, render this image, your web browser goes, ooh, graphics editing, that's better suited for a graphics card and it hands that over to your graphics card. So it draws this picture and it draws it with so much attention to detail that if you ask any other graphics card running any other version of software running on any other computer to do the same thing, it'll look just a little bit different. So if you ask the same web browser to draw the same picture again, you'll be able to, to remember who it was who drew the picture with exactly those pixels in exactly those places. Here, Facebook, Com homepage actually makes your browser draws this like interesting script with smileys and collects it to um, fingerprint your browser. And again, this is an invisible drawing. You wouldn't know that it's going on, but by drawing that image and then reading it back as a sequence of pixels, it's going to get an exact sequence of pixels back that's going to differentiate uh, different users, different devices. Of course, like all the websites you visit, how much time you spend on them, your like mouse movements, key presses, what part of the page you interact with, all these are sent in real time on websites that use session replay scripts. And a session replay is something like a video recording of your browser screen when you're browsing a website. They're not reputable companies that you might have heard of. You don't know who they are, you don't know that company is recording your screen, you don't know who's going to get access to that video. And in that process, these companies try to redact your passwords and credit card numbers and so on. But that redaction, doing it in an automated fashion, is technically hard, I would say essentially impossible. So they fail a lot of the time. So we've found that credit card information, health information like your drugs and prescriptions 
encryption, student information, all of that sensitive information is getting into the hands of uh, third parties. There are a number of extensions you can install in your browser to protect yourself against this kind of sneaky tracking. Privacy Badger, Ghostry, uBlock Origin. If you install any one of these, they're going to do a pretty good job of protecting you from most, certainly not all, but most of the hidden third-party tracking. <laughs>